today I'm going to uh, continue on with the, the 3D graphic stuff we did. Um, the, for some reason, the video, I uploaded it, but I must have pressed the wrong button because they have a button that says private and public, and I pressed the private button apparently. And so the last class's video didn't go up, so I uploaded it again, and it should be up there right now. It should be there by now. But uh, so I didn't get a video of that class, but I have one. I just I just didn't have it in time. Uh, today you want to cover uh, something that's uh, it's a hard concept to get across, and so I brought some visual aids with me to help me do it. And uh, basically, it has to do with creating what they call a scene, the scene of that you're like. Suppose, for example, you got a web page. And you want to have stuff in the web page, and you want to have it all connected together so that when somebody comes in and they pick up, uh, suppose they pick up a cup of tea, they pick up the, 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 the uh, cup, and the cup comes off and they drink the tea like that. But then they want to grab the saucer and grab the saucer and pick it up, but they want the tea, the cup to go with it, see. So in other words, there are certain things that when you, uh, when you look at them, they're individual things that you control. But sometimes you want to have that control hierarchical, so that, for example, let's take the sun and the earth. If the sun is here and the earth is over here, the earth's going around the sun. Lovely. But if you take the sun and you move it, you know the earth's going to go with it because it's gravitationally attracted to it, so it's going to go with it. In the graphical world, they, if you just drew the sun and you drew the earth doing a circle, they're not related to each other. So if you move the sun, the earth would just continue to revolve around nothing. So what you have to do is, you have to say the sun is hierarchically bigger than the earth. And you, you hook them together like that, so that one is within the other. And then what happens is when you move the sun, the earth goes with it. The earth continues to do what it does. It does what it does anyway. But it, it's like, think of it like a, a, a baby in a backpack. Where mom goes, the baby goes. But the baby all has it, it also has its own stuff that it's doing, okay? But it's also locked to its mother. So therefore, mother tells it where it's going to end up and how much it's going to turn and everything, but the baby within itself has its own controls. And it's the same thing. It, you only, in the case of hierarchy, sometimes they get very complicated. For example, you have the sun, and then you have the earth, and then you have the moon around the earth. So now the, the earth controls the moon, so it's in charge of it, but the sun is in control of the earth, so it's in charge of it. So if you move the sun, the earth and the moon both go with it because it's all, it's a hierarchical control. Um, in order to set that up, it's only one instruction. It's actually very easy to set up a hierarchy. You just say this one controls that one. But in order to do it, what you have to know is what really happens, and that's the hard part. Okay. So what I want to do is uh, I, I have a program up there, which we're going to get to as soon as I get through this visual thing here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to show you how the hierarchy works when you're creating a hierarchy, what it does, how it actually works. Okay. Uh, to begin with. Um, I have I have an arm up here that has it has uh, a shoulder and it has a uh, upper arm it has an elbow and has a lower arm that's all it has so it has one joint up here and it has another joint down here I had set up two joints now there's a reason why if you think if you think to yourself why didn't I just put the upper arm and the lower arm and just have it work why put in those joints well the problem is with the, the, the language we're writing is when you spin something on its axis, it spins in the middle of the object. That's where it spins. In other words, it controls its, its rotation by the middle of the object. I didn't want to do that. I wanted, if the object is the upper arm, I didn't want the upper arm to just to spin like that. I wanted the upper arm to spin on this point up here. So I'm not spinning, I'm not really spinning the upper arm. What I'm spinning is this guy. And so what I said was, make, make a shoulder cylinder and that cylinder is hierarchically above this arm right here. So what happens is when I turn this cylinder, the arm turns with it. That's the idea. So the arm, in other words, the uh, cylinder is in charge, which is the shoulder, is in charge of the upper arm. So when you turn this, this turns with it. And of course, the elbow being attached to the upper arm and the forearm being attached to the elbow, everything goes with it when you go like that. As if, the, if this guy turns, everything turns with it. Now, then what I did was I added another cylinder down here. And I said, this cylinder only controls that part. So what happens is, then I can turn that cylinder and turn this part. But if I turn the upper part, the whole thing goes. So you get the idea. So you get this, this uh, hierarchical structure. The problem is, when you say 
that this shoulder is in charge of this upper arm right here, what happens is whatever this does, this will do. Whatever the shoulder does, this will do. And that starts at the moment of creation of the two things. Right off the bat, they're locked together. As soon as you say these are, these are actually hierarchical, even when they're born, they're, all, they're locked together. And here's where the problem comes in. Because the shoulder is a cylinder, and the, uh, the upper arm is, a, is just a big box, an elongated box. That's what that is. So the question is, how do you set them up so that they look like this. So the cylinder looks like this, and the elongated box looks like this, so that, so that they'll both actually be in, in a situation where when I rotate this thing, that will rotate too. That's what you want to have happen. See, I'm going to later add this down here. I'm going to add these guys, which is the, uh, which is the other background. That's the forearm right here. So this is the shoulder that rotates, this is the elbow that rotates, this is the upper arm, this is the lower arm. And what you want, when this turns, you want everything to turn. When this turns, you only want that to turn. See, that's the trick. That's what we're trying to get in that hierarchy. And you can bring it down, you know, whatever you have. You can make the thing as complicated as you want. But basically, I just put two of them in here because it's pretty common to have a couple of them. So here's what I want to do. I want to be able to turn this guy and have this guy and this guy and this guy all locked onto him. So when he turns, they all turn too. That's, that's what I'm trying to accomplish here. Okay? And so instead of talking about these guys at first, I'm going to make a demonstration of how these guys work. Now, here's what happens. When you create a cylinder, it always creates in the same orientation at the zero position. You have no control over it. It's, it's an automatic, it's one of those built-in things. So here's the x, y, z axis right here. This is the y, this is the x, this is the y, and this is uh, minus y, this is x. And the z axis comes out right towards us, out this way. We're in the plus z direction. We're out here in, in the plus z direction. I'll draw it on here. Plus z. And when you go back that way, it's minus z. That's going into the, into the board. It's minus z. So everything you, every time you construct a, real, a world uh, uh, that you're going to render, that world has these axes built in. This is the center of the world and everything. And every single thing you create immediately is created right at the origin. So if I create a box, it starts there. If I create a, no matter what I create, it starts there. I can move them there afterwards and move them all around, but they start there. So here's what happens. Normally what would happen is, I would, I'm going to move this up a little bit, I'm going to get rid of these guys here. Normally what happens is, when I create a cylinder, it creates in this direction and there's nothing you can do about it. No, the cylinder always looks like that. That's the top of the cylinder right there, and that's the left, and that's the right, and that's the right. It creates, it doesn't create sideways, it doesn't create looking at you, it creates vertically, just like that. So that's an automatic thing. So when you create a cylinder, which is called a tube in our language, uh, that's what you get. And if you look at the cylinder right here, this is sort of like the cylinder that would be like the, the shoulder. I created a cylinder for the shoulder. And uh, it looks like this. The plus Z is pointed towards us. The minus X is pointed towards this way. And the plus X is pointed towards that way. And as you can see, Y is up this way and minus Y is down this way. So that's actually how the cylinder is created, just in that orientation right there. That's the beginning of the cylinder, okay? Then from there we can move it around and do all kinds of stuff with it. But basically that's where it begins. So in the program I have, what I, what I did is I wanted to put it in that position right there so that I can make it look like a shoulder and have a, uh, and have a forearm that it controls. So step number one for me with the cylinder was to get it in this position over here. So here's what I had to do. Uh, it, it turned out the distance from here to here, well, let me see if I get some, I'll, I, I should use sort of real numbers just to be sure I get the, it conforms. Uh, minus, that goes minus four and four, okay. Minus four and four and that, okay. So here's what it has to do. I have to move it minus four this way. I have to move it four in this direction. That's minus four in the x direction. And I had to move it up four in this direction, in the y direction, four y and minus 4x. That's what I had to do. I'd move it here to here. But still, it's in the wrong orientation. So then I had to tip it over the z-axis. So I, I rotated it over the z-axis. Like that. So no, it started like this, just like it was when it came over here. But then I had to tip it over so that it would get in that position. So step number one, in order to get the shoulder in the right position, I had to do those three operations. So what I did is, I wrote these operations. I wrote these three things. In the commands we have, we have commands that allow us to rotate and move, okay? So here's what I wrote, here's the instructions that I wrote in the, uh, 
in the program. It said, uh, it's called joint one. That's called joint one. So I said joint one dot, and it's a tube because it's a cylinder. We call it a cylinder. We created it. Dot, and it's a rotate. Uh, I don't know. Sorry, I got to get its position first here. Two things first. It's a position in the x direction. Uh, it's got to be at minus 4. And what that does is it takes the cylinder and moves it over to here, like so. That's the first thing it does, move it over to here. So that's the first instruction that does that. Then I say, okay, now i got to move it up. In the y direction, I have to move it plus 4, so I just put 4. So in other words, what I did was I moved it over here, then I moved it up to here. Actually, it should be over here, up to here is where it is. And then I tip it over, like I have to tip it over now, which is rotating in the Z, it's rotating over the Z axis. Okay, so these guys are, are taken care of. And uh, I didn't take it off the plane. It's still on the Z plane. That didn't change. So therefore, joint one dot two dot position Z is equal to zero. That doesn't change. It's still in the Z plane right here. It didn't get off the Z plane. Okay, so that's all okay. So these instructions right here take the shoulder immediately and put it in its position. Now I'm going to tip it over so that it's right where it should be, so I can rotate properly and control this guy. So what I do is I say, okay, joint one uh, dot. Uh, it's still a tube. It has to rotate now. Dot x. I don't do any, I don't bring it over x at all. Yes, I do, but okay, I'm gonna just leave this for right now. I'm just gonna leave this. I'm not gonna do anything with it right now. Well maybe I should. I'll put turn joint joint one. What that is, turn joint one is a variable. There's nothing in it right now, it's zero right now. I haven't done anything with it. But I'm going to use that to control the thing. I'm going to use it to, to rotate it over x. I'll tell you why in a second. Just, just leave that as it is. So this is the initial stuff I'm doing. That's zero. That's a zero right now. Nothing's going on here. So I don't do anything there. And then I say uh, uh, the joint one dot tube dot rotation dot y is equal to zero. I don't rotate it over the y axis. But I do rotate it over the z axis. Rotation. I rotate it over the z axis 90 degrees. Remember, 90 degrees looks like this in uh, radians. Math dot pi, capital pi, divided by 2. That's it. That's a 90 degree angle. Okay? These are the instructions that are, uh, remember when you, when, you, when you write all these instructions, you have a little render function, and everything's in the render function. So this should be the stuff in the render function right here that controls this first, this first object, which is joint one, which is that true. Okay, so here's the instructions. The instruction says, okay, move it left, move it, well, I'll use the thing. It's uh, like this to us. So the first thing it says is move it left four, so it goes over to here. Then it says move it positive four, so it goes up to here, and then rotate it over the z-axis. This is the z-axis, so it rotates over the z-axis. Okay, and that's the position it's in right now. Now, it's, it maintains its own axis, and internally, everything contains its own axis. It never changes. It always has, this is always its z-axis, no matter which way the world is, this is its z-axis. So, for example, if I said, like the top right now, if you look at it, it's x. If I rotate it around the x-axis, which is here, it would go like that, which is not the x-axis here. That would rotate this way. So in other words, the axis of the object stays with them. You have to remember that. They have, once they get their axis, they have their axis, and that's what they are. So this guy here, even though, uh, even though he moved like this and like this and turned over, he may have turned over, and he may be different than what the regular x-axis is right now, but he doesn't care. If I rotate him over the x-axis, he's going to rotate this way. It's not over the regular x-axis. So you've got to remember that. He maintains his orientation. 
to himself. Okay, that's a critical part you've got to remember. He doesn't lose where he is. Now, next question is, I created him, and this is the position he's in. Now, the next thing is, uh, he has this lower arm I want to create. And they're both created in the same position. I've created the lower arm the same way. I created it right here. Uh, the thing. I created it right here also. It looks just like this. The lower arm looks like that. So I'm going to have to get it over here, somehow move it up or down. I'm going to have to get it underneath him so when he moves, it moves. I have to get it into this position, okay? Well, here's where the problem is. It, it gets actually really crazy. When you, when you link these two guys together hierarchically, they're both born at the same time, and, they, and wherever daddy moves, junior moves also, and that's a big problem. Because when you take this original guy right here, and you move him, this guy right here, and you move him over to here, this guy is inside of him, he moves too, because he's attached to him totally. Whatever this guy does, this guy does. So therefore, when he's born and moves, he moves also. And when he moves up to here, he moves also. And when he tips over, he tips over also. So at this point now, if I want to get him into this position, you can see that I have a different set of instructions to get him down here and turn him than I would have if he was over here and I just brought him over here and moved him up. You see, that's the, that's the trip. And that's the problem with these hierarchical things. Once this thing is in a hierarchy, this guy is uni united with it and it goes with it. And now to get him in the proper position, what I have to do is I have to get him down and turn him somehow to get him in this position so that when this guy moves, he moves properly. But I've got to do it according to his coordinate system. Okay? So what happens is, let me see if I can do that. Uh, I'm going to read I'm gonna read out the instructions that I had to use to get this guy in a proper position. First thing was... Uh, so I had to move him minus two. So he's up here. He's up here, right? Uh, I got that. Three plus what they do here. Oh. Upside down. Okay. Okay, what happens is uh, the, the cylinder and he both moved over here, moved up here and tipped over. So now he's like this. Now what I want to do is I want to get him down here. So what I have to do is his x-axis, minus x-axis is here. So I have to move him 2 minus on his x-axis. So that's what I do. I say move him minus 2 on the x-axis. That's what the instruction is for him, which I don't have here. That's for, that's for the joint. Actually, what I should do is let me, let me write the instructions for the, it's It's a long-winded thing, but let me do it because uh, if I do that, what do I do with my crayon? Uh, I'm going to write the instructions for moving the box. This is, these instructions I got to move this over here. Now I got to get the box in this position. And the reason why I'm doing this, by the way, is because when you have objects, you're going to have lots of objects. You got to know what you're doing. Otherwise, your pieces are going to be all over the place. You don't know why they're all over where they are. If you follow these, this thinking, you'll be able to move everything into the right position. Then when it starts to operate, you it'll work for you. So I got to write six instructions. This one here is the up left arm. So it's called up left. Arm. That's what that box is called right there. And it's a, a solid cube. When you create it, that's what it's, uh, that's kind of object it is. And then I got position dot x. I'm going to set that at uh, minus 2. I'll tell you why these are like they are in a second. But that, this is what, uh, well, you can see I had to move it down. That was what I had to do. And then uh, up left. solid cube dot uh, position dot z equals zero. It's important that you put these in, even though it doesn't do anything. So in other words, this it doesn't turn uh, over the y-axis, and it doesn't. I'm sorry, it doesn't. I'm sorry. Pardon me. I'm sorry about that. It doesn't locate. It locates minus two, and it stays at the origin as far as it's concerned. It doesn't care in terms of y and z. It doesn't do anything. It just does that. That's all it has to do. In other words, I have to move it down. That's all I have to do. So the next question is, uh, let's see how many rotations you got to do. Up, left, arm. Uh, for rotation.
notations. The first three equals zero. It, it looks like this. Uh, it's a uh, so. Okay, it turns out that it doesn't rotate over x, it doesn't rotate over y. I'm going to, this is the same here for y, dot y equals zero. So no, it doesn't rotate over either the, the, uh, the x or the y, it doesn't rotate over them, but it does rotate over the z. Here's what it looks like, up, up arm. So these are the these are the three commands here that have to happen. It has to uh, two, there's only two commands required. It has to move to the left and it has to rotate. But let's watch what happens to the box. Now remember, the box was born inside of that cylinder. It's still inside the cylinder. It's been locked inside. It's still locked inside there. So the first thing you have to do is you say the box is in the cylinder. I want to get it in this position. So you got to go on minus two, and this is the x direction right there. And so you go minus two in the x direction this way, and then you rotate it over the uh, z axis, this axis right here, you rotate it over the z axis and it goes like so, and there it is, it's in the right position. So, in other words, those are two commands that are required to get the, that box in the right position to what we want. Now, wherever this guy moves, this guy will move also because it's locked to it. And we've kept it locked to it, we haven't done anything. He's moved within himself, it's like the baby can move its arms while it's hooked on the mom, but it's still hooked on the mom, and when mom walks, it walks whether it likes it or not, it goes with it. So therefore, what happens here, when this thing does anything, this thing does it too. Like during the original birth process, this thing was born up here, just exactly like uh, the cylinder was. What we did is we pulled away from the cylinder, and then we turned, and that's all we did. That's the only change we made. So therefore, now we have is the cylinder and the upper arm. And that right there is sort of a, a description of how you, you gotta keep track of where these X, Y's, and Z's are. When you, when you make a change in something, that is a parent of something else, you've got to be sure that you realize that the child has the same thing. By the way, those are the magic words they use in computing, is parent and child. Uh, the parent has a certain, uh, certain situation. The child has exactly the same situation. So you extract it by telling it to move it to a different position. But it's still hooked onto it. So if this does anything more, it does it too. And that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that's what's going to create the first program. Uh, and the second, the, that first program has another part to it. It actually looks, it looks like this. You got two cylinders like so, with a box. Then you got a cylinder like so, with another box. Basically, this guy moves everything. This guy just moves this one. And I'm just showing you how to do it. Now, you may ask the question, which is a legitimate question, is why didn't I just make two boxes and have this one rotate and this one rotate? Here's what the problem is. Whenever you rotate an object, in this particular language we're using, it rotates in the middle. So we're going to rotate it right in the middle of this thing, which is not what we want. We want it to rotate up here, the shoulder up here. So what I did is I said, okay, what we'll do is we'll create another, uh, another object, which will be the shoulder. The shoulder rod, when I create that shoulder rod, that rotates right in the middle, which is exactly what we want. It rotates in the middle and drags everything with it. See, so in other words, that object rotates properly. The, the, this, this thing would not have rotated properly, so I made the cylinder for it to rotate, the arm's attached to it, the next cylinder is attached to that arm, the next uh, arm is attached to that cylinder, and that's how it's going to work, okay? So let's, uh, let's go to the, uh, the videos and talk about it. Uh, there's one thing I probably should bring up uh, just, just before I do, because I probably won't get back to it. Um, there's, a, uh, there's a program called Blender. You just go online to Google and write in Blender. 
Blender is a three a free three dimensional graphics construction program where you can make three D graphics stuff. It's free. It's the most popular one there is. You can put texture on things. You can make any shape you want. You can do anything you please. It will make any object you want. You have to learn how to use it. And, and believe me, uh, uh, YouTube has enough. I mean, you can spend your lifetime on YouTube learning how to use this thing because it's very. It could be complicated. You get the two, you know, things that are too uh, uh, complicated. It'll take a long time. But the simple thing of making an object. And basically the way you make an object is you're going to create uh, points in space. You're going to take this object and you're going to have a bunch of points with lines between them. And then what you're going to, that's going to create the basic object. Then you say put a surface on it. It's going to put a surface on all those, all those triangles between those points. And then say put a texture on it. It will give you the chance to pull in a texture and put a texture on a thing. So it will actually give you a, some kind of a, an image. Then what you do is you save the thing. And when you save the thing, our programs will then read them for you. If you want to read one of them, you want to say, bring it into my program. You say, bring this object into my program. And it comes into your program, and here it is, just like any of our cylinders or any of that stuff. It's there also, okay? Uh, at this point, I have to tell you, there's one problem with it, is you can only bring in one, one object like that at a time. I haven't, lazy, I guess. I haven't set it up so it could take more objects. It'll take one object. It'll take any of these guys plus one of these weird objects that you create, whatever it happens to be. And it can be any shape you want, and I'll show you, I have one demonstration, and I have one online too, but uh, I'll show you that one too, so you'll see what they kind of look like. Uh, that's it. So uh, let's, uh, let's do some uh, online stuff here. Any questions for anything? Not yet? No? No questions? Okay, here's the first program of today, and uh, if I use the right and left arrows, all of this is rotated around. It's, it, this is just simply saying, uh, you know, like we did, we're moving the camera, we're moving the camera around. Take a look at the thing. The, the, the screen isn't down. What? The screen isn't down. Oh, <laughs> so much for that, huh? Okay, what do we get? Oh, the screen's not down. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I think it's down low enough. Let me just bring it down to be sure here. This, ooh, ah, ooh. Where did it go? There it is. This is the arm, and uh, if I uh, press the left and right key, all it is, the left and right key is just a regular camera move. The camera's moving around the thing, okay? There's nothing going on there. So, now what I want to do, though, is I want to use these joints. I want to make them do something. There's the cylinders I was talking about. If I hit W, notice that everything moves because W is the letter that says move the upper shoulder, move the upper shoulder, and Z moves it in the other direction. So that's the W and Z control. All they do is simply say, when I hit those letters, uh, add, a, add a couple of degrees to, the, uh, to that rotation. Okay. Then uh, the next thing I do is uh, I move the lower arm by using the letter E and the letter X. These are actually pretty simple-minded, but they but they do the job. So in other words, what you have here now is an object that has a, a hierarchy in it. 
So the upper upper cylinder controls everything. The lower cylinder just controls the forward arm. That's all. And uh, you can see that you see the principle at work from what we did over here. And all of those parts there were born in the same position as the original cylinder. So I had to figure out where they all went after that. And that was, that was an ordeal. It gets after all, it gets a little complicated. Move this way and that way. But it's all logical. It's just that you have to work it out. Now I have to tell you in the uh, in, in the in the computer languages. Not on this online one. This online one is a little bit difficult to work with. They're still working on it. But uh, in the regular computer languages, you don't have to go through all that. You can simply tell something it's hierarchical and it, and it locate itself properly. We, we have to do it. It doesn't, it doesn't do it for us. Okay. So that's like the first program. And let me show you the second program, which is called, uh, well, I go in here called Venus. Venus Moon or something like that. It's called Venus Demo. Now in this one, you can see that the moon moving around the uh, Venus here, or moon moving around Venus. Uh, if I move Venus, you know, you can't see that, but if I move Venus, the moon will still keep going around right here. If Venus went over here, the moon would still be over here. I didn't actually put a command into that, but they're not related to each other in any way. The sky is an independent character created. The moon is an independent character created. They have nothing, they're not hierarchically connected in any way. So therefore, these two guys actually will not do what you want them to do. They, if you move Venus, the moon will stay there rotating around itself. Okay? But the other program, which is called... It's just killing me lately. this program, you'd be able to hit the keys, left and right key, to move it around, like so. Notice that the moon continues to rotate around the earth, even though I'm spinning around. Now, 
the left and right key in this case are not just the camera. If you just move the camera, of course, that would be true. But what I'm actually doing is I'm moving the, the, the sun. That's supposed to be the sun. I'm moving the sun faster to move it into a, no, it's the sun. The mother of all these things is moving faster. Therefore, the earth moves faster. Therefore, the moon moves faster. They're all locked together because it's a, a, a sequential hierarchy between the two. And that's what I want to show you is that the first one was just the, the shoulder and the upper arm. Now what I have is the shoulder, which is the, the sun, okay, controlling the earth, which controls the moon. It's like having the second joint in there. So you got, you got a double step of control. So you have a hierarchy, this over that, that over this. And now I'll show you the commands that actually create these things because they're very simple. You, when you create these objects, you create them exactly the same way that we created objects all along. You just do it the same way, nothing different, okay? The only thing we have to do is we have to add in a simple step to say, Lock these two guys together so one of them is the parent and one is the child. You just have to do that. And I'll show you how to do that. Uh, let's see if I can get this. Give me something here. I'm going to bring it up. So, bring it back down again. This program right here, let, let me just go through it as, as we're looking at it. Uh, it contains a hit key, that hit key right there, that was when, when I hit the keys. Uh, I can, if I uh, want to, I can uh, move in and out. I can, with, uh, with this thing right here, 3840, that's like hitting the uh, uh, upper key, upper, upper arrow, lower arrow. Those are moving in and out of the object closer to it. Okay, those are camera controls. It just says I can move in or I can move out. I use that. But these two other guys over here are quite different. One of them, I, turn, I change the speed of the, 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 the sun is spinning itself. I'm not looking at the camera. I'm, I'm actually spinning the sun faster. And I'll show you where that happens. These keys control this number here called Earth orbit speed. And down here, what I do is, I add, this is the sun right here. To the Z, to the Y, I rotate it. I, its original rotation, which was 0 0.001, I add that earth orbit speed to it. So if I increase earth orbit speed, it's going to spin faster. The sun speeds faster. And the planet is attached to it, and the moon's attached to the planet. So now here's where we go. Here's how it works down here. When you create these things, you create the sun, it's a sphere, the planet, it's a sphere, the moon, it's a sphere, and then these two instructions right here, look how easy they are. Sun dot ball, which is, which is what it is, dot add, and you put planet dot ball in there, and what happens is the Earth is now totally under the control of the Sun. Okay, and if you say planet dot ball, which is the Earth, dot add moon dot ball, then the moon is completely under the control of the planet. So what you've done is by putting these two instructions, and you've created two hierarchical steps: the Sun's at the top, the Earth's in the middle, the Moon's on the bottom. The Moon can do whatever it wants; it'll just do it itself. If the Earth does something, the Moon will go with it, no matter what it does. If the Sun does something, all three, the sun and the earth, will all, the moon and the earth will all go with it. And so that's how you get that, that hierarchy. And now it's a very simple idea uh, when you write it down like this, but uh, when you try to figure out how to make it work, sometimes it's a pain, very hard to do. And uh, the other parts of the instruction are exactly the same. You basically have this, uh, up here, you have this render function, it requests animation, and you, you draw the sun, then you add this little part right here where we say Earth orbit speed. By the way, the reason why this is 0.001 plus Earth orbit speed is because initially the sun had a spin. I gave it a spin. That was its, that's the value it has. And then what it does is it adds to that anything that you put in Earth orbit speed, it adds it into it. It says spin the sun this much faster or slower. So that's why when I hit the arrows left and right, it added or subtracted from the uh, movement of, this, of, the, uh, of the Earth. Uh, down here is, is the, the moon, uh, is the Earth itself, and as you can see, it has a spin also. That's it right there, and that spin, by the way, is what it's giving to uh, the moon. The moon has a spin around it, based on that. It has a spin around it, based on that. And then when we say the moon itself, you can have a spin of your own too. That's like the baby in the backpack. The baby can do what it wants. The Earth is doing what it wants, and let's say the whole room is doing what it wants, and you can walk into this three-stage hierarchy. And that's how it works, okay? If you were to do a character like a walking character or something you have, where they had to have all these joints, uh, you'd have uh, two joints here, two joints in the elbows, 
uh, two joints on the hips, two joints on the knees, and that's the minimum that you can get away with, I think, to make the thing move. You have to have at least that stuff. So it's like two, four, six, eight, you need eight joints just to make something walk or, or move around. It usually takes about, I, it usually takes about, the earth, uh, regular mannequins have about, about 14 joints in there, more than that even, that they move around. Okay, next thing is, uh, I want to show you how to, uh, uh, this, is leaving, this is leaving this problem, and I want to get to a uh, blender and, and wavefront and all that. There's a, a program called Wavefront, it, 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 it invented this stuff a long time ago, and it all seems to be like, I don't know if they're still in business or not, but the stuff seems to be free, it's all over the place. So what they did is they created these objects with texture on them. You, you can create your own, they, they allowed you to make an object and put texture on it, in their format. Now when I say their format, here's what I mean. All of the objects you see on the screen are all pretty much look the same. They've got points, they've got lines between them, which is uh, uh, covered in by whatever it's filled with, and textures put on top of that. That's what you normally see. But when you put it in a data file, when you store it in a data file, what does it look like there? It looks entirely different than it does on the screen. It's because it's information that's, that the thing needs to construct the object. So what they do is, Different companies have created different kinds of data files. They look different. They have the same information, but it's sort of oriented differently. And uh, Wavefront has a specific format. And what they do is they have two uh, files associated with it. Two data files. No, it's just like a JPEG. It's a file. Okay. Uh, one file is called the object file. It's got a dot .obj at the end of it. That's like instead of having dot .jpg or dot .set, it has dot .obj. That file contains all the data that's necessary for the, for the points and the lines between them. It contains what they call the geometry. That contains the geometry of the object. Okay? You don't care what it looks like, you just know that OBJ contains that. And the second file contains instructions about how to take that geometry and a picture and place, put that picture onto the geometry. Because you can put it in different ways and there's instructions in that. When they build the, when they build the file originally, they build the original geometric object, and then they build this, this file which says, take this texture and put it on in a certain way, so the mouth is where the mouth is, and the eyes are where the eyes are, and the geometry, so it keeps everything together. So it has two files, OBJ and MTL, M, like mother TL, MTL, and it has a, a JPEG file, usually it's a JPEG. So basically what you're going to have is three different files associated with these objects. It's going to be an OBJ file, an MTL file, and uh, a JPEG, which is the picture itself that it plasters onto the object. Okay, uh, let me uh, let me just get this object up here and then we'll uh, we'll have it. Oh, I so hope I brought that thing. Oh, yeah, so bad. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay, I want to show you now. It's called. Uh, it's in, it's in the it's in the uh, list we have today anyway. It's got a three weird name though. It takes a while to, lo to uh, load because it's loading a texture file, it's loading this texture file, and the geometry, it's loading all this complicated geometry, so which means it's got a lot of points. It's got two data files it's got to bring in, and it's bringing them in now. And so you, you can expect it to take a couple of seconds to, uh, let me get it up here. It'll take a couple of seconds for it to come in. When you do this at home, it'll be a lot quicker. This UAF's uh, computer geeks are not going to just put it really up and operational and so on. Now.
so we'll see. But that was it. It was just the, you just had it in source. So you just, you just to show the code, not the actual program. Oh, it said program on the slide there. It said it source. Did it say source, source code? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I see what it did. Thank you. Good deal. Okay. Uh, so let me get back to our site here. See, I might even put it in, so if I did it, I didn't have to go through all that. If I did it or not. I don't know if I had enough time, maybe it ran out of our house. Uh, shapes, this might be a good place here, this says. Yeah, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, I had the, no, that's not a idea. <laughs> what am I doing here? This object, which is just considered to be rotates, we know what it is. It's a rock. It's a rock with texture on it. Okay. And, and not, now, notice that it's got flat surfaces. It doesn't have to have that. It can be round. Uh, it was set up. It was set up when I set up originally. It was set up to show those flat surfaces. The rock's got like, like you know, a lot of character to it, a lot of texture character to it. So like a design character. So it's like a crystal sort of. But basically, this is an object that isn't in our list of spheres, cylinders, or whatever. And it was built in Blender. It was actually a very simple object to build. And uh, let me show you how the, uh, if I can get the listing up here. This is how it actually works. hope that was up on the screen. This is how the thing works. It's exactly the same as our programs normally are. Blah, blah, everything's the same. Okay? And up here, I also had, it's, it's called Mesh. And I gave it a position and a rotation. I let it rotate. 0.005, it just keeps rotating around the uh, y-axis. But basically, here's how you get something like that in. You say load object, you put down the name of the OBJ file, which comes with these things, and you put down the name of the MTL file, which comes with it, and that's it. That's all you have to do. And you load the object. And the object, in this particular case, is called mesh. It always has the name mesh, because you can only load one object at a time. Okay? There are ways of loading an object and it's connected to other objects, and they all come in at once, and you still only have one major object. Uh, I have on my site, let me, uh, this one's actually a pretty simple one, but let me go to my regular website here and see what that looks like. Uh, Okay, so there we are, uh, dotworks.com, and I think it's right over here. Let me bring it up here. Let's see if I can get my buttons into here. Design shop might be up there. Yeah, yeah. Head 3D, there it is. I'll bring this down so you can see it. Can you see that head there? The head. Now, if you look at it, let me get a mouse here. If you look at this head, actually, it, uh, it's got several parts to it. It's only one MTL. It's not just like what we have. It's only one MTL. But it has several parts to it. Because you could, it can be locked all together. That can be done at the, uh, when they were originated. Uh, it's got eyes and hair. And all those colors plastered onto the eyes and the face and the mouth and all that stuff, all those colors are just texture maps. And the texture maps, that's what that MTL does for you. It says, MTL says, put this texture on this geometric design and this pattern, okay? And that's done at the creation time. When you're in Blender, that's when you put all this together and you see the thing in Blender, it looks good. Then you save it, and it saves it as an OBJ, MTL, and then you have to, when you write your program, you have to be sure that that OBJ and the MTL and the, the J JPEG, the picture, that's the texture, that all has to be in your folder so that the program knows where all those three things are, okay? And that's how you do it. Uh, I have a version of this thing, and I, I don't, I'll never remember the name of it, but what happens is the eyes keep looking at you. No matter which way you turn the head, the eyes keep looking at you. And it's very freaky, really. It's almost like that's different than the normal thing because you wonder, why, how do they keep looking at me? It makes you feel uh, intimidated. But uh, that, that basically, that's basically the character that, uh, that that's the simplest one I have that does that kind of stuff. 
The program for that is the same as the ones you just saw. It's just, all you basically do is just uh, call for the MTL and the OBJ, and, and that's all there is to it. And it comes in and it flashes itself on the screen. And that's pretty much, uh, I don't want to go a lot further, but I would like you to do on your, on your, home, your home trip today uh, is, to, uh, is to go to these three 3D programs and look at them. Look at the code for them. Be sure you realize the code is actually quite simple. And sometimes some of the stuff it looks weird, but it's actually a very simple code. The hard stuff is getting it, making sure all the numbers are right so the code actually does what it's supposed to do. If uh, uh, we're getting so close to the end right now, I probably, for the people online especially, I uh, want to be sure that I mentioned that uh, the project that's due, uh, you know, it's like at the end of the, uh, the semester. So I'd like to have. Uh, people start thinking about it. It doesn't have to be a stupendous pro project. It has to be something that, uh, it, should be, it should be better than any of the programs we've written. It should have a little more to it than any of the programs we've written. Well, not any more than the Egyptian room. That would be, that'd be sufficient. And I don't really care what of the, of the things that you use, as long as you use a handful of them, and sort of, you know, just, let me tell you what one guy did. I, I just got one. One person's already, two people already finished. But this guy wrote this program, and he has, uh, he has a horse that doesn't, only has front legs. I don't think it has any back legs, or it has only back legs. I don't know what it is, but it's a deformed horse. And a deformed horse is like in a, it's like in a GIF uh, program file. And what happens is, I think he says something like, put this horse in a place he'd like to be or something. I can't remember what it is exactly. Basically, the horse is like in some dungeon or something. You have to grab the horse and move it over to uh, the hay field where all the hay is. It's the silliest program I ever saw, but the thing about it is the horse is so weird. I may, I'll ask him if I can put it up for you, but uh, it's actually a pretty good program. And that's his project. That, that's all he did. There's not much to it, but he uses everything. It uses all the texture maps. It uses the, you know, the images on the screen. It uses everything we want. And I thought that was pretty, pretty good. Uh, this isn't a computer graphics course, and it isn't really an HTML course. so. I, I'm not going to ask you to do some stupendous project. And I know you've got other things going on, and this is not your major. So I would like to have you do something just to prove that you know how to use the instructions, how, how to use any group of the instructions. And by use them, all I simply do is mean how to steal the things that work for you and change them to your, to your needs, whatever they are. And that will pretty much get us here. Uh, I have some more things. We have some more things to cover. But I think at this point, we've probably covered all the things that I, might, I would expect you to put into a, uh, a final project. The things we're going to cover now is refinements of things we haven't uh, talked about too much before. There's three big things, or two big things, in programming languages we haven't covered. Uh, one's called uh, an array, and the other one's called a loop. These are things that every programming language has, and they're very, very handy for, if you're going to do a lot of stuff, they're very handy for storing stuff. So uh, next week I'm going to go for that. I'm going to get, get that stuff in. Well, I'll combine it with the things we're already doing, by the way. I may stay in 3D graphics even. It might be a good place to stay. And, uh, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that this thing applies to things that we've already done. Um, the uh, last week's video, last class's video didn't mount. I don't know why. But I re-uploaded it again. It should be operational now. So that'll be, if you ever need that for anything. But there it is. Uh, that's it. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm running short. These classes are a little short lately. I'm going to uh, make some videos to compensate for that because I have to... Uh, I'd like to explain some of these graphics things, especially the texture stuff. I think last class was a little chaotic. I'll try to get, get it clear so that you can actually see how to do this stuff. I'd like you to be able to, long after this class is over, be able to come back to these, look at a couple of things and say, okay, I can do it. Build a, build a, uh, a, a 3D uh, HTML uh, web page, which there's still none out there, so you'll be, you'll be original if you do anything in your field, whatever it is. And I guess that's about it. I'll be here for a while, but uh, you guys need to ask me questions, anything.